Boy, I sure did show those last two stars. Uh, post-commentary for this one, unfortunately. Uh, what happened was, yesterday I had to record a bunch of footage for the next Majora's Mask segment, uh, because that one was supposed to be post-commentary to begin with, so I had to change my, uh, audio settings to, uh, record straight from speakers, and I forgot to change it back for this, so you've got game audio, but my commentary has to be done in post. Uh, this level is pretty interesting. Well, saying that might be going too far, but I like this. I like the original level, so uh, by association, I like this one also. Very puzzle heavy. Uh, when you enter the level, no matter what part of the painting you go in on, the water level will always appear at that one point. Like because you'll kind of you'll appear like on the switch. I don't know why I paused. Uh, okay, here we've got these weird growing things. They are... They are weird growing things. And you have to do that in order to raise the water level. And uh, because... Yeah, they're floaty platforms. So they go up with you and they continue to be weird like that. I'm not sure why they grow like that. It's kind of odd. But basically you just keep doing this. Um, it's, it's an interesting concept, it kind of goes on for a bit too long, and with the fire it's very, very difficult to, like, get a good streak going, you have to save state a lot, and if you fall off, there's no way to get back on them because they grow, so you have to reload, or swim all the way back down to the bottom and reset the water level and do it all over. Uh, so... At this point, I was basically complaining about people who say that I need to do this without save states, because, yeah, I'd like to see you try to do it. Uh, I'm sure it's doable, but it wouldn't be interesting to watch. It would be very painful. Uh, there's that, and then the people who say I need to use a controller, because they're so much better. Like, I think if I can pull off this game, if we're getting stuck in it, if I can do this game with the keyboard controls, that says a lot about my ability to do it. Like, I have never once considered it a handicap, and I know I'm repeating myself here, I've said this before, but people keep saying it, so I've gotta say it again, too. It isn't hard to me. It has never been hard to me at all. It's, I've been using keyboard controls since, like, at least 2003. If you have a good setup, it's not hard. The only thing you can't do is very specific angles, and even then you kind of can, um, or pressing a, like, a slight amount, and you don't have to do that that often. Like, for example, when you have to sneak in Banjo-Tooie or aiming the cannons in this game, and if you do that, if you need to do that, having a controller helps, but you could just change it in the settings, as I usually do. So, there's that first star. Uh, next one, pretty much unchanged. Uh, I was told that I should talk about Project Bargo. I mentioned it on my fan channel back when I still had the fan channel running. Well, I didn't have it running, but like when I, when people actually used it. Um, I mentioned Project Bargo. It was this weird dream I had, and I'm supposed to talk about it at some point, so I guess I might as well do it now. Uh, basically, in the dream, uh, the Earth has been sort of, like, scientists have declared it uninhabitable now, because there's, like, global warming is so bad, and I, uh, there's, like, all the plants are dying. I don't really know what was happening in the dream, but it was really bad. And so, the idea was, like, we aren't going to be able to live here. Uh, sorry, I gotta interrupt here. Uh, yeah, this box is just kind of high up, and you can get it by triple jumping to it, as I will eventually, but you're supposed to use this switch, and also a bunch of heave hose. And right here, well, not there specifically, but eventually I will run across that plank at an awkward camera angle, using keyboard controls just to show that it's doable. Anyway, back to Project Fargo. 
uh, the, yeah, basically, they're saying that, like, the Earth will only be livable for another, maybe, 25 years max. So, what they did is they built this giant metallic shielding around the entire Earth. Like, basically supported by these really, really high, like, higher than any mountain, giant towers to support this. And so the whole Earth has this shielding around it, and inside the shielding is, like, an artificial sun, basically, so that there'll still be sunlight, and, uh, like, plants and animals will still be able to live. And the outside of the shielding has, like, rocket thrusters on it. So that, basically, the idea is that they'll fly the Earth throughout space. While also, like, continually broadcasting a radio signal that hopefully aliens would pick up. So, like, we're just gonna sort of be cruising throughout space with the entire planet hoping to find alien life and be like, hey, can we crash at your place for a while? <laughs> and it was like, people were, it, it, it was kind of terrifying, because like in the dream, it's like, they're going to do this, there's no way we can stop it. Like, they all already, they're, they're definitely going through with this, and they, like, specifically believed or, like, specifically stated that it's very likely that the whole planet could get, like, sucked into a star's gravity. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I, and it was called Project Bargo. It had nothing to do with Bargo the Victim. Anyway, this star here, Secrets in the Shallows and Sky, this is by far the most retarded star in the whole hack. Uh, finding hidden numbers is nothing new, but there is no... And I mean no way that you can find these things on your own. That first one was by far the easiest to find, because it was already in a somewhat suspicious location. Uh, this one here... There's nothing there, right? Oh, there is! Yeah, there was a number there. I found that one on my own also. I don't remember how, but I found it, uh, just by accident. Those are the only two I found. The other three, I had to watch Omega Edge's, uh, LP of this. And a couple of them, in hindsight, aren't that bad, but it's still, like, this is, this is horrible. I had to PM him about this. Because I'm like, there's no way anybody could find these. What were you thinking? And he said, like, I meant to mark them with coins. But he didn't. So, meaning to isn't good enough. You can't release a game to the public and not... and have it be this cryptic. Yeah, there's the third one. I thought there might have been something there. And I even checked, but I didn't jump high enough. Oh, and over here. Bullet Bill Wall. I actually remembered that. Gotta love that, though. Okay, so there's, there, there's three. They're reasonable. This one here is by far the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I, I, I didn't find it on my first try. It's somewhere on that wall. And it's somewhere... It's like too high to jump to. You have to drop to it. And I, and I even remember in the LP, he said, like, oh, this one's easy to find, you just do this. And I'm just thinking, like, are you shitting me? How would anybody know that? There's nothing indicating it. At all. And, I'm like, even knowing where it is, I can't find the damn thing. Where, is, where the hell is it? Okay, there it is. Yeah, that was easy to find. If there was a coin there, it would be easy to find, but maybe even too easy, but yeah, just don't put it there. You don't do that. Now this fifth one actually gave me a bit of trouble. I, 
couldn't remember where it was. It's not a hard one to find. I just didn't remember it. And so... I thought it might have been here. I guess because... Oh, yeah, my screensaver came up. Uh... I guess I was still thinking about the original locations. There was one that was in here in a box. Uh, it's not here. But then I thought it was on top of the cage. And that was yay for yawning. Oh god. I was pretty sure it was on the cage. Uh, and I'm glad I checked because it did remind me of where it actually is. It's not on the cage, but again, I was thinking of the ones in the boxes. I thought it was just sort of high up. You had to jump to it. But, nope, uh, see, let's see if you can guess. Like, okay, I think, yeah, now I noticed it. It's over here. Yep, it's the bottom of that thing. And the stupid thing is, I actually tried that. When I first played this, I tried doing that, but I wasn't specific enough. Which is kind of odd, because I didn't even really touch the tip of it there, either. I guess my first try must have been really bad, but... Yeah, that's just... That's bad. I don't like this star at all. I'm gonna whine about it. That's my whining noise. So now I have to actually like, get the star, and I kind of fail badly at that. I just suck at navigating this level. I do still love this level, though. It's the be it's like... It's just kind of the best for screwing around in. I don't know. Yawning time! Wow. Why am I yawning so much? Okay, Stargate. So... Uh, that was only three. Wow. Yay for 15 minute segments. They feel a lot shorter when you're recording them or watching them. Doing post commentary on them kind of gets a bit grating. Okay, so yeah, this one's in the elevator shaft. Uh, it's the same location as before, but getting it's a bit different because this water level cannot go any lower than this. To my knowledge, at least. Correct me if I'm wrong. After checking the comments, I don't need five more people telling me I'm wrong. But, uh, here's the way you're supposed to get it, which I surprisingly remember. It just kind of came to me. Like, I was thinking, like, oh, wait, how do you get this? And, oh, yeah, you do that. Yeah, you have to go back up here, uh, hit the switch. Be very careful with these switches, because if they, sh if they make boxes appear in one place, chances are they make them appear in another place, too. And it does also in this case. There's a box right here that allows you to wall jump up the cage. Uh, with some amount of difficulty still. Because the camera angle doesn't really let you see when you should wall jump. You have to just kind of know the timing of it. And also, you have to be going pretty straight back and forth without any sort of a weird angle, or else you won't really be able to get on the platform. And there's a fire shooter halfway up the thing two-thirds of the way up the thing, whatever. Yeah. There's, that's not a surprise anymore. We should all know that there's fire shooters everywhere in this game, but my god. <laughs> okay, and then the last star here. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Because the first time I did this game, the last star I ever got here was Secrets in the Shallows in the Sky. So, I never actually entered missions 5 or 6, I just got the stars playing in other missions by getting into the downtown area through other methods. Uh, so I was a bit surprised by that. It really makes it almost a bit too easy doing it this way, because I'm skipping the red coin hunt, but the other one that's down here is the quick race through downtown where you're supposed to get the vanish cap, hit the switch, go in the gate, but you don't actually have to hit the switch. And you still don't have to hit it here. This is completely unchanged. It's really easy. Why didn't you change it? It's like, make the hardest star ever, and then leave this one still to be easy. 
So there you go. Um, that leaves just red coins and hundred coins. I do check here. Um, if you enter the the star mission for the red coin one, it does dump you off in downtown immediately, which um or whatever. But yeah, you, you can't do that if you wanna get all the if you want to get a hundred coins, because there's exactly a hundred in this level, so you have to just get into downtown through another method. So, we will do that next time.